Hi, I'm Danielle, founder of thesedge.org, the place where changemakers come to launch and grow impactful social enterprises. Now, if you saw my last couple of videos, you'll know that I've been talking a lot lately about collaboration and how it can be a secret power for social entrepreneurs to really move their projects forward and create impact more effectively and faster too. So today though, I want to talk about the dark side of collaboration and touch on when things go wrong. Because you know what? Sometimes you have these expectations for rainbows and then it turns into thunderous rain clouds and it can really uh, cause some challenges for you. And you can almost wish you did not go down that path in the first place. Because guess what? It definitely happens. <laughs> and it has happened to me. And so I want to share some of the common pitfalls today that I've encountered and uh, hopefully that can shed some light on your situation and help you avoid them. I also think it's important to remember that you can't expect every potential collaborator to be a good fit for you, or maybe they won't be a good fit for you at that particular time. And even if you think you've found the perfect partner, things can still fall apart and go wrong. So I'm not saying that if we follow a certain set of steps or a roadmap like we outline in Meeting of the Minds, that things will go perfectly because there are still going to be challenges, of course. But I think here the idea is to grow our skills and better equip ourselves to navigate these situations with a little more ease and hopefully a lot more success as we go. So I want to tell you a little bit about one of my past collaborations that ended up really falling apart and why, looking back, I think that happened. Uh, so a few summers ago, I was presented with what seemed like a really amazing opportunity at the time. It came through a friend of mine who had put me in touch with a local charity who wanted to host in-person workshops about social entrepreneurship. And so, of course, that was a great fit. That was exactly what I was doing online with the Sedge. And I highly respected the person who brought the opportunity to me, so I was really excited for it. In the end, there was definitely no major um, damage done to my life or to my business, but it was a bit of a trying experience, and in the end, it did not really feel worth it for me. And looking back, I see a lot of things that I could have done differently. A few things went wrong along the way. First was, we had no formal agreement in place. And this is one of the top 10 major pitfalls to be aware of that Solen and I talk about in Meeting of the Minds. We had agreed to share the risk and the reward of the initiative, so any revenues earned over and above the costs would be split between the organization and myself. However, I didn't have any control over the budget. The venue was already chosen. Um, most of the marketing and promotion was done through their group. And when all was said and done, the leadership didn't even provide me with a breakdown of what the expenses were. And you know, at that point, I was kind of tired of the whole thing and I didn't actually push them for that um, because going over the numbers on my own, I figured it was pretty much a break-even event. So the lesson here for you is best case scenario, definitely draw up a formal agreement, even if it's a simple memorandum of understanding, something that outlines exactly what's expected of everybody involved and something you can refer to later uh, as things progress. It's a way to hold your partner accountable. And uh, from your side, you want to always remember to be transparent as well. If, if you're in charge of some of the uh, administration of whatever you're working on, you want to be able to share that with your partner so they know what's going on as well and everything is clear to everyone involved. Now, the second pitfall that I encountered in this particular collaboration that's kind of related to the first one is that I realized partway through the collaboration that our goals were fairly misaligned. And this is another one of the top pitfalls to watch out for. I had understood the organization I was working with was interested in rolling out this workshop series as a bit of a pilot to test a social enterprise revenue stream for, to support their work. And they had expertise on the board of directors who specialized in social entrepreneurship. So I knew they were open to the idea of this concept and that they knew about it and had embraced it in that sense. Um, but along the way, it became clear that the workshops were not really a major piece of their strategic plan, and it was more of a passion project of the person that I ended up working with, which is great, but I, I didn't really realize that in the beginning. 
And um, because of that, the, the goal of generating a surplus on the series was not there. <laughs> they were happy to have a break-even event, which I didn't realize at the time. What ended up happening actually that uh, brought my awareness to the fact that our goals were so misaligned was that we had a participant who was very excited to join the program and was able and willing to pay for it. And my co-facilitator offered for, for this person to join us for free. And so that's when I realized, okay, I think we're a little bit um, off on our goals. Not that I was out to make lots of money, but you know, I did want it to be worth um, the huge amount of time that I was putting into to doing it. Now the last pitfall that I'll talk about in this scenario that I encountered and that hopefully you can learn from is that we had very clashing work styles. And one of the reasons I didn't realize this was because the initial meeting was with uh, the leader of the organization and not actually with the person who I would be working with on it. And so it wasn't until uh, much further into the work that I came to that realization that we weren't really a good fit in terms of how we like to work, um, how we wanted to cover the topics, how we wanted to run the program. And so one thing to keep in mind for you is that you really want to make sure you start with something small and test out your work styles with the person that you'll be working with. And you can think of um, a way to do a one-off event together or um, even a small writing project together, maybe a blog post for one of your websites or something like that where you can really see if you're a good fit before you move into a longer term commitment. Okay, so enough of the pitfalls, let's talk about the good stuff again. <laughs> I just wanna mention quickly a couple of the reasons why it's worked so well with Solen and I collaborating and how we've managed to avoid some of those same pitfalls along the way. Now, the first thing that's been really great for us is that our goals and visions are very aligned. And we learned that early on, but it's always been reinforced and supported as we've gotten to know each other better and as we continue working together. So along the way, we're getting that positive reinforcement that yes, we're on the same page, we are moving in the same direction individually as well as together. So that's really great. And the other thing that we learned early on is that we do have complementary work styles. So again, we started with a one-off um, small webinar together and really our commitment was just to promote the event and then one hour together online. So we didn't need to do anything past that had we found it was not a good fit. But luckily, we really enjoyed working together and um, our working styles complemented each other. So that was a way to build trust and keep moving forward. So you can learn more about how things worked for Selene and I. In, uh, we have a case study about the Global Social Entrepreneurs Lab, which is in our book, Meeting of the Minds. And you can actually download it for free. Um, I'll put the link nearby this video so that you can check it out and learn more about what worked well and and how we did that. My challenge to you right now is to think about these pitfalls that I talked about and see how that ex fits with you and what you're exploring right now. So have you taken steps to formalize an agreement? Are you all on the same page about what's expected of everyone involved and when? Are you clear on the mo motivations and goals of your partners? Do they fit with what you want to do? Are you on the same page? And finally, have you worked with them before? Do you know that you like working together? Do you know that your styles match up fairly well? And if not, how can you design a small project to do together um, to, as a beginning point where you can build off of later as you go on? Okay, so best of luck and keep up the good work.